Hi Bon, I run May episodes 1 through uh, 11 review. I know a lot of people felt like I probably wasn't going to get this far in this show, um, especially after the first couple of episodes, I wasn't all that impressed by it. And I decided to just keep watching it, mostly because it was only a half series. Like, it wasn't a full 26 episodes, it was only a short 13 episodes, so I felt like, well, if I'm already at episode 3, I could probably get through it pretty easily. And that's kind of my attitude that I went with for, like, four episodes or so. And then once, once some more interesting stuff started happening, I started to get more invested because it started to, it introduced this, this uh, actual plot line that you could follow and, and want to see carried out. Because the first couple of episodes, I kind of just got the vibe that it was like, oh, here's this weird thing and weird place, but, you know, let's go about our everyday lives in this weird thing in this weird place. It's like, they, they spent all this time, like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna ride our bikes over here, and they would spend all this time showing the bike riding. And if I was watching a slice of life anime, that'd be one thing. But this was a, sh a show where people are born out of cocoons and have weird dreams and have halos and wings and there's this weird wall and it was like, I want to know about that stuff. Why are we focusing so much on like teaching kids how to eat carrots or, or walking into a bakery or whatever. And I just, I felt like there was so much dead air that it wasn't using its time properly. And it was really frustrating for me to watch the show because there was so much that I wanted to learn about and it felt like they were specifically not showing that stuff to me. Um, which I, I think is, is a draw for some people. Like some people would look at that and say, well, I have to keep watching in order to find out about all this stuff. But for me, I would have dropped the show if it wasn't for you guys saying that I should stick with it. So I did stick with it and um, once once Koo disappeared, once Koo took her day of flight, that was when everything started to become very interesting because it was finally something something that was the catalyst to the the plot, the more interesting plot that I that I was there to see. Um, I wasn't there to see the everyday lives of the Haibane. I was there to see the weird stuff that happens that you would expect to see in episode one. I mean, episode one did have weird stuff, definitely, but I I wanted to see the the weird stuff. <laughs> Conflict is really necessary for a show, um, and I couldn't figure out why all of the interactions between the various characters seemed to seemed so like boring. I couldn't figure out why. And then I realized it was because everybody liked each other and everybody got along. There was no drama. You know, they would they would playfully tease each other. But everybody just got along and everyone was friends with each other and kind to each other and nice to each other, which is awesome. Like, one can only hope that that sort of thing exists within your group of friends and your community of friends. But for a show, it was, <clears throat> it was creating kind of a a boring uh, precedent, where every time this group of girls would get together, they would just have a pleasant interaction and then go about their days. They're also helpful and so friendly and so nice, which is which is good, because it does set up the 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 uh, environment that it's a welcoming place and everybody there is welcoming and friendly to one another, but as far as, you know, creating entertainment for someone like me who's watching it, it's like, okay, so that interaction was exactly the same as the previous one. But it was set up because it was creating a juxtaposition between their home and then the Haibane who lived in the co-ed home in the factory. And then it was also creating a, an environment where all of the characters would start to worry about something happening. and there would be a great big issue if somebody disappeared, or if somebody started acting strange, or if somebody became recluse, or something like that. So <clears throat> the, the constant friendly interactions were really necessary 
in order for everyone to become so concerned when Raqqa started becoming recluse after Ku disappeared. Um, not only did everybody run off into the forest to have almost kind of like a funeral for Ku, but um, they Raqqa took it the hardest and uh, didn't know how to react to it. So she, so once she started becoming recluse, everybody took note of it. This really, the, the Ku's dis disappearance definitely was the catalyst, as I said before, to the show of rocketing into something different than it was before. Just a bunch of people getting along in a weird setting. <laughs> so the Raka started to wonder, like, what are the Haibane and why are the Haibane? And, you know, what good is this existence day by day? This, this boring existence established in the first few episodes. What good is this existence if everyone treats you just respectfully and like a child and like a good luck charm? And they, they walk up and they're like, oh, I saw her body today. That means I'll have good luck or whatever. It, it, it started to really get to Raka and really frustrate her that, um, that she was living in this place in this world and she didn't understand anything about herself or what she was supposed to be doing or why she was supposed to be doing it. Um, as she had more and more discussions with the, uh, the Toga guy, the, the leader of the Haibane Renme, um, it started to become very, very metaphorical that what, what was going on with the whole Sinbound Haibane and the reason for the Haibane. Um, obviously I haven't seen the last two episodes yet. So I can only really guess and, and wonder if there will be a reveal, but it seems to me that the Haibane are living in a, like, they, they are people who have died already, and they come to this place because there's some kind of thing that they left unfinished. There's some kind of unfinished business that they have to take care of. and. The Sinbound Haibane, someone like um, Reki, who has black spots all over her wings, is somebody who will struggle with that unfinished business and doesn't know, doesn't understand what the unfinished business is. And then once you are able to, to finish it or be at peace with the fact that it is unfinished, you're able to take your day of flight like Ku. So maybe for some of them it takes a little bit longer, and for some of them they can never do it at all. And what I kind of got from it, you know, when, when the uh, communicator guy was talking about how Reki knows what happens to the Sinbound Haibane who can never take their day of flight, it kind of seems to me that the Toga used to be Haibane. And when they, when Haibane are unable to take the day of flight, that is where they go, because he said that they would become isolated from humans and isolated from the Haibane, and it really seems to me like the Toga fit that description. Um, so, uh, when, when I say the, the Haibane seem like people who, who are dead, who died, and have unfinished business, it also seems to me that they're almost like people who committed suicide. <clears throat> and because of that, they do have the, the um, unfinished business. The, the reason why I think that is because of the interactions that Raka has with the crow and the revelations that she had after the crow died. So she was saying that she felt like the crow was someone who cared about her and was trying to help her and trying to save her. Um, and um, it was following her around. And it, it seems like she was somebody who, for whatever reason, decided to end her life and the crow was a loved one who was trying to stop her and failed. But by acknowledging this and acknowledging that there is no way to get back to whoever that loved one was, she was able to um, t turn her sin-boundness away, like get rid of the black spots on her wings. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff in this show that seems like it is a direct metaphor for something else. And based on comments in my watchings, it seems to me that there's never really a 
full explanation for what's going on. I will never necessarily find out what equals what and 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 uh, you know what the walls represent or or if the Haibane really are people who committed suicide and now are trying to finish out their unfinished business is one of those shows where you have where you're able to watch it and you're able to come up with your own conclusions because it is open ended and it does it does speak to a lot of different metaphors and I for me when I was watching it it felt very overt that that was what the metaphor was supposed to be. Uh, everything that happened is what I interpreted is that that is, is, is what was happening and that Reki if she's unable to fix her sin boundness then she will go on to become a toga. It felt very overt to me but for all I know that's just my interpretation and someone else with a different like life experience might interpret it completely differently. And I've always said that a show with an open interpretation like that is a good one. Um, you should be able to interpret a show the way you want to. Everything shouldn't always be totally black and white. Um, and it is something to appreciate and something to watch. And um, I, I, I'm interested to see what episodes 12 and 13 will have and what the conclusion and finale of the story will be. Um, mostly because I, I want to I wanna either be confirmed that, the, that my interpretation is correct, or I want to confirm that who, whatever your interpretation is, it, interpretation is, it could be correct. Either one would be a good conclusion for me. And I'm, I'm not exactly sure if they're going to conclude the story, or if it necessarily is important to conclude the story, or if there's even really a story that we need to conclude. Because Raka seems like she's the protagonist, but now that Raka has figured out her turmoil a little early on in the series, it now falls upon Reki, who's, who's the one with the conflict still. Um, and, and, and she's the one that has to be saved at this point, because otherwise she is going to be the one who falls apart and maybe becomes a toga, or maybe just totally disappears altogether, or maybe there's some kind of other building where Haibane, who are sinbound, are kept. I don't really know. Um, um, I, I, think, I think it's going to be an interesting watch, that's for sure. The thing that we are left off on at the end of episode 11 was the old book that seemed to have been fossilized. And the writing in the old fossilized book correlates to the, the inside of the wall that Raka has been cleaning up. What it means, and what is going to come from that, who knows. Maybe it's going to be information on the day of flight, um, a way to help Reki come to terms with whatever she has to come to terms with in order for her to carry out her day of flight, or not necessarily carry out her day of flight, but to reverse the sin boundness, because it's not a time limit thing, because Nemu has been a Haibane before, for longer than Reki has. So if Reki is running out of chances, then it, it can't be a time limit thing, because Nemu has, Nemu would run out of her chance, chances first. So, I, I don't know if there's like one thing that can happen that can fix what's going on with Reki because she was born with the black spots on her wings. But it will be interesting to see because this show seems thoughtful enough that it could end with tragedy. Not necessarily with tragedy, but it could end with with Reki, you know, failing. And then something uplifting happen happening at the end. I don't really know. Sometimes shows from the very beginning have a very clear ending. You can pretty much interpret what's going to happen at the end of the show based on the events of not only the first episode, but the, the close to the last few episodes. You can pretty much see what's going to happen. With this show, 
because the lore is so mysterious, and every episode we learn something new about the lore that contra not not contradicts the previous lore, but it it contradicts maybe what you might have been thinking. Um, you have really no way of knowing what is going to happen in the finale, and or even who the finale is going to be about. It's it's very mysterious, and um, I I think. It's going to be a fun watch. I think it's going to be a quiet, thoughtful watch, of course, but I do think it's going to be a fun watch. Um, and I am, I am glad that I stuck with the show. I mean, it's not going to be one of the shows that I, I put in my top ten or or rave about or or necessarily even suggest that other people watch. But if people are talking about it, then I think it would create a very interesting dialogue. I think. Um, it would be fascinating to talk to someone about this show. And on that note, obviously I want to see your comments, but try not to spoil me. Do not confirm <laughs> any of my predictions or thoughts on it, if there is even a way to confirm it. Uh, there's still two more episodes that I have to watch, and I don't want to be spoiled because because um, obviously, obviously no one wants to be spoiled or something. The, the, the end of the episode, the payoff is always the best part. So um, the next video for High Bonnie Run May is going to be a watching of the last two episodes, 12 and 13. So I guess I'll just see you next time for that. Bye.